Matt, today's days. What days are today? National Good Neighbor Day. Hmm. National Sons Day. Not to be confused with the Phoenix Suns. Like, if you have a son, oh. like you are a son. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. of celestial things. Yep. Nope. And it is also National Drink Beer Day. Oh, yeah. Whoop, whoop. Um, typically during the week, I'm a you know, whiskey drinker. Oh, okay. Beers for Fridays and Saturdays. I would think it'd be hmm. the other way around. Really? Yeah. Yeah, just a quick nightcap, you know. Of it. Weekends for getting wild with whiskey. Nah, weekends for pounding beers. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I could sustain that much booze on a Saturday or Sunday. I need to slow it, or Friday or Saturday, I need to slow it down with some uh, standard alcohol, or beer, I should say. Yeah. So when you do your nightcap, it's just one? Well, okay. It's a couple. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And for me, night's like five o'clock. True. So we drink, drink some beer today. Uh, celebrate your sons. And be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm right now. Actually, I am on watch out for packages and mail for, for Richard. Oh, nice. But not watering plants. Correct. I texted him. I was like, so is there anything to water? And he goes, nope, the flowers are already dead. <laughs> and I go, hooray. You did your job last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did not elaborate as to whether I'm the reason why his flowers are dead. Okay. Hopefully they're just out of season or something. I don't know. But I'm not going to ask. Just get the mail and packages. Right, right. I can be trusted with those, yes. Kate, are you going to order an action figure of yourself on Friday? I don't think so. No? Is that the big day? Yeah. The selfie series from Hasbro. Selfie series from Hasbro. Is this the same one we were talking about? I believe so, a while back. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can be an X-Wing pilot if you like, you know, like from Star Wars. They also have Marvel Heroes, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters. So starting Friday, 80 bucks, they will 3D print your face onto an action figure. Wow. What you do is you take five different shots, five different photos of the front of your face, and then you'll pick a hairstyle online. <laughs> It can't scan hair very well, so you can get a little more adventurous with your with your her as an action figure if you don't feel like you can rock it in real life. There you go. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, nope, not going to sign me neither. Eighty bucks. Hasbropulse.com. That's where it is. Hasbropulse.com for the selfie series available Friday. Eighty bucks sounds like it'd be maybe a fun Christmas gift to give a kid or the adult, uh, yep. the kid at heart. Yeah. In your in your life. I mean, there's going to be plenty of 40-somethings, 50-somethings who are going to get their faces printed on a Star Wars action figure, I would think. I bet you my mom is writing down HasbroPulse.com because when we talked about this before, Matt, she was like, hey, this would be good for your brothers. Yeah, you need to get five different angles of their faces, though. I bet you we could figure out a way. Okay. Ooh, can't wait. The suspense. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a good opportunity to tease a future edition of Matt and Kate. Do it for the show, Mom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Kate's mom. My mom is mommy on this show. That's how we keep them clear. That's right. And and you're you can you can have mommy. Thank you. You keep mommy. I think it works better. Thank you. Did you hear Darth Vader is retiring? I did. James Earl Jones. I heard he might still like consult them about Darth Vader, like he still has a consultant role, but he's no longer going to voice it. They're going to use a computer. They're going to use a computer. Yeah. Which they've recently done on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Am I saying that right? Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah. Great job. Okay. His dialogue was AI generated with James Earl Jones' approval, of course. Was all of it? I wasn't sure if all of it was or not. I know mm-hmm. they wanted him to sound like the younger version of Darth Vader, you know, since this is... Instead of a 91-year-old man? Correct. Yeah. But how old is Darth Vader? Oh, how old is Darth Vader? I mean, he's old hmm. when James Earl Jones was younger, so wouldn't it make sense for him to sound old? Er? Well, the problem is with the prequels, you know, since... Ah, uh, there it is. Obi-Wan okay. Kenobi was took place between the prequels and 
the original Star Wars series. Ah. And so they were trying to dial in James Earl Jones's voice as it might have appeared closer to the prequel as opposed to like Return of the Jedi. And so gotcha. they sampled more, I think, the of the original Star Wars. I think they fed more of the original James Earl Jones audio from the original Star Wars in there to create this mm. AI. It's very dorky, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah, but then eventually, aren't they supposed to use the technology so that we can talk to our dead grandparents? Oi, Remember really? That? Yeah, there was, wasn't there a thing like Amazon was teasing, like, hey, your dead relative could read you a bedtime story or something like that? Remember that? I don't remember it being a dead relative. Yeah. I thought I remember it just being a relative. Yeah, because if you have, it didn't take that much. You just need a couple of minutes of recorded audio. Mm. But this was a prototype stage. It wasn't anything that was available okay. just yet. But soon enough. Soon enough. Your dead relatives can read you bedtime stories. I mean, they can do that now while they're living, too. That's true, but why waste their time now when you can just wait? Okay. Yeah. Never mind, that got a little bit dark. Yeah, real dark. <laughs> Take advantage of now, Matt. Don't wait until they die. Yes. Unless your parents are really annoying, but you still want their kid, their, you know, the kids to get bedtime stories. You can still have your parents read right now and save it for your kids. You can save it on your iPhone or make yeah. a recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I had my sister record a bunch of books for my girls. So I had a CD of AJ reading books to the girls. Oh, that they would listen to before they went to bed. Very sweet. Yeah. And now you could digitize those and have her read new stories. Correct. Not now, but soon. Maybe. Possible. Someday. If Bezos gives us the technology, yeah. Come on, Bezos. Did you see the deal about, you know, Snape, Alan Rickman? Mm-hmm. His diaries coming out? No. It's called Madly Deeply, The Alan Rickman Diaries. It's out oh. October 4th, so next week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to share this one. This was after, some of them have been released, some of the little excerpts have. He wrote, not telling you what props I stole or what Joe Rowling said to me. Rowling? Yeah. Joe Rowling said to me. JK, right? Or yeah. who's Joe Rowling? JK, he spells Joe, J-O. Okay. And so that was after they had wrapped the Harry Potter series. And then there's a whole bunch of, it's really kind of charming. Name drops some other celebrities that he would do like dinner and drinks with and whatever. But Aww. he kept a diary since 1972. Wow. Kept a pocket diary. Uh, let's see, 26 total volumes. And each little book contained a page like that you could put that day's info on. Hmm. So, it, like, for example, early on, around the pool and feeling a bit nothing about HP, which really disturbs me. Or is it because I'm reading Martin Amos's experience, which charts a life, HP being Harry Potter shorthand? Right. Really interesting stuff. And I know your daughter's kind of into Alan Rickman, so. I okay. love Alan Rickman. And I know she would be, they both would be more interested in what he had to say while he was talking about Harry Potter. But I want to know more about other projects he did. Yeah, it says so. it, goes, it probably probably will. I think they just in this story highlight mostly Harry Potter stuff, right? For the clicks, you know. But yeah, you could read a, what was the deal that he was in when Elliot was like, "Ooh, ooh Snape," or whatever in the hell. Sense and sensibility. Hello, Snape. Yeah, it was fantastic. So good. So Alan Rickman's diaries out next week, October fourth, specifically. And fine, I'll click on the calendar, see which day of the week that is. That's Tuesday. I like the description of it. He was Severus Snape in Harry Potter and Hans Gruber in the action film Die Hard. <laughs> and that's it. Those are his two roles right there. Yeah, they withheld when he was, although a lot of people, you know, he was kind of a heartthrob as Snape, right? <laughs> no. If you're kind of goth, maybe. <laughs> goth heartthrob. Garth heartthrob. Yeah. Garth heartthrob? I say Garth. <laughs> it's hard to say goth heartthrob but it came out garth <laughs> goth, goth heartthrob goth heartthrob may have to practice that and get back with you i guess i huh? mean who knew you'd need to like perfect that one right matt you know why i love john cena uh he's hot he's charitable is that why is it the make a wish doesn't he have a make a wish record yes he set the guinness world book of records by making the 
granting the most wishes through Make-A-Wish Foundation. The Guinness Book of World Records? Yeah, what did I say? Guinness World of Book Records or something like that. No. It's okay. Just I'm, I'm only throwing calling, it around. I'm only calling you out because you, you called me out on. Uh, I've had a few Guinnesses, so there you gone. go. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It'll get Could, me through. Couldn't tell in that uh, opaque cup. John Cena has granted 650 wishes. Yeah, it's impressive. And do you know who the person like right behind him is? I don't know. No. I don't either, but they only have oh. 200. You don't know who it is, but you know that they only have 200? The, I know that no one else has granted more than 200 wishes. Damn. So I know that the person behind John Cena has only done 200 wishes. And he's granted 650. So we don't care about that person. Look at John Cena granting wishes. <laughs> the only one doing 200? We don't care about that person? Well, I don't know if he's the only one who's done he or she. But no one else has granted more than 200 wishes. And here comes John Cena with 650 wishes. For the unfamiliar John Cena, a wrestler as well as an actor. And seemingly a good guy. And I think he does Honda. And uh, he does some Uh, other voiceover work for commercials. There's like an investment one he does. hmm, Yeah. 650 make a wish wish. Do you think that's... is, is uh, Is he hiding something? You know what I mean? No. No, some people are like really charitable and then they're like secret villains. Is Bruce Wayne a secret villain? Well, some people think that, you know, Bruce Wayne should be arrested. Yeah, vigilantes. Yeah. Get out of here. Um, I kind of kind of disagree with that. I recognize the point, though. Yeah. But no, I don't think John Cena will get arrested for anything nefarious. I, yeah, I don't think he's a villain. Yay. Yay for John Cena taking care of the kids. 650 wishes. That's just fantastic. Yep, so many wishes that it's not even worth the rest of us even trying. Right, Kate? Oh, that's not true. Okay. You, dear listener, could slowly but surely make 650 make-a-wishes happen, too. Well, if you make one wish, you've made a difference. Just think of the number of... That's two years if you, if you do a wish a day. Yeah. Not quite two years, but pretty close to it. Pretty close, yeah. What a dude. Do you see they're looking to vaccinate the honeybee? Okay. No. Yep. And, you know, if you think, oh, man, what if there's vaccine? What if there are a bunch of vaccine deniers in the, in the, in the thing, in the colony? Well, all they have to do is convince the queen. They get the queen vaccinated, and then she passes that protection on to the larvae before they hatch in a process called transgenerational immune priming, Kate. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. How'd they figure that one out? Science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. They distribute the vaccine to commercial beekeepers in the U.S. and then hope to expand in Canada and then overseas in 2023 once they get approval in the various different countries. And it's supposed to help the beehives from, you know, the colony collapse is what it's called. Keeping the bees in business. That's right. Next, the bees and the monarchs. First off, yeah, honey's great and all, but the bees also pollinate a bunch of other food and stuff. So, go get them. Woo! Matt, Snoop Dogg is not the only one in his family that is launching their own breakfast food. Okay, previously we learned that Snoop Dogg has a cereal coming out. I guess Snoopio's, but... What was it for for drizzle of Snoop Loops? Snoop Loops, that's it. Yeah, available right now. So someone else in his family is Mama Snoop Breakfast Foods. I didn't even know that was a person. Yeah, that's his mama. That's his mom, Mama Snoop. Yep. What are they? Pancake mix, syrup, grits, and oatmeal. So she's got Mama Snoop Breakfast Foods. Oh, so it's a variety of different mm-hmm. like yeah. hot hot breakfast meals ish. What were they so again? You can get your pancake mix, okay. syrup, grits, and oatmeal. Yeah, that's all you need. Crack an egg on the side of that and you're good to go. Yeah, I was going to say in a side of Snoop Loops to balance <laughs> breakfast. Yeah, my guess is that Mama Snoop's oatmeal is probably healthier than Snoop Dogg's Snoopio's, but uh, Snoop Loops. Snoop Loops. But I haven't seen the nutritional information yet, so. 
I haven't either, and so I can neither confirm nor deny if there's yeah. cannabis in the pancake mix. <laughs> hmm. Well, we, we know that there's no cannabis in Snoop Loops. We know that Snoop Loops is cannabis-free. Yep. But the labs haven't had a chance to crack open the pancake mix yet to see if there's marijuana remnants in there. Maybe they have. I just don't have that information. THC. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure plenty of people get high and eat those pancakes. Right? Not necessarily eat those pancakes and then get high from the pancakes, at least. You, know. you see that Walmart has launched, quote, immersive experiences in Roblox, Kate? No, I have not seen that. Yep. Walmart trying to get their metaverse on. Your kid's in the Roblox at all? No. Okay. I know nothing about Roblox. Well, congratulations. I know, right? Uh, a lot of the kids are really into the thing. Mm -hmm. Our mutual friend, Matt, co-worker Matt, you know Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has been playing like Bee Swarm Simulator with his kid in Roblox. There's all kinds of weird simulators and stuff in there. But Walmart's is Walmart Land and Walmart's Universe of Play. And this article says, really just ways to advertise toys to children. Hmm. That's what Walmart is good at. Advertising to children, selling toys, yeah. at least selling toys to children, right, right. Selling toys, yeah. Let's see, I say Roblox has more than 50, five zero million daily active users, two-thirds of which are under the age of 16. Yeah, I don't know Roblox. Yet, yeah, but when you do, the kids come at you for it. Trust me, you want to, uh, from what I've gathered, you probably want to put up with the kids playing Splatoon. Bad soundtrack. You thinking the bad soundtrack, I should say. Yeah. I think it's a good soundtrack. Yeah. I feel like Splatoon is going to be better for you. But. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Who knows? Maybe you need to have the kids do it for the show. Mm. You don't think. I don't know, Matt. You don't think Elliot and Finley would like to do some stuff for the show? Do some Roblox for the show? I mean, I, can, I feel like I can think of other things that they can do for the show instead of video games. <laughs> like clean the dishes, pick up around the yes. house for the show. Yes. Make me dinner. <laughs> it's for the show, kids. Come on. It's for the show. Rub my neck and my back. <laughs> for the show. For the show. Very important for the show. For the show. Yeah. Matt, we haven't talked about McDonald's in a while. Oh, you're right. It's been too long. What's up with McDonald's? McDonald's in Finland is going viral because they're serving a licorice shake. Licorice shake. Licorice shake. Tastes like Jägermeister then. I that would be a black licorice shake. Yeah. Oh, is it Ugh. red licor is it red licorice shake? Well, they don't say, but I oh. would assume because that's way more popular than black licorice. Is it? I don't know. I've really have never been a fan of either. Oh, I do love licorice. Licorice, licorice is Lic licorice eye, licor licor eye. I don't know. I think it's like deer. Okay. Licorice. Not a big fan of licorice. No. I but if you pronounced it the way it's spelled, I don't think anybody would eat it. Liquor ice? Liquor rice or liquor ice. I don't know. I don't know how licorice sounds like it does, but. Yeah, me neither. But the same McDonald's in Finland is also serving a monster freak shake. And it's inspired <laughs> by Sesame Street's Cookie Monster. Oreos crushed with whipped cream oh. with swirls of blue in the shake. But it's not a massive shake. It's a regular size shake, but that's the flavor. Yeah, I think it's Monster Freak Shake because they can't say Cookie Monster. Oh, really? But I don't know why they need to put Freak in there. I, f <laughs> I figured that they would have been... So I figured they were partnering with Sesame Street. I don't believe so. It just says inspired by Sesame Street's Cookie Monster. Hmm. If it was partnered with, don't you think it'd be called like the Cookie Monster Shake or something? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. If you can use it, use it. It just seems like them even mentioning it seems like... It could get them in trouble, but maybe not. Maybe the magic word is inspired. Yeah. What's the ingredients again? It is swirls of blue in your shake topped with crushed Oreos and whipped cream. So you can probably get it in chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> and what does blue taste like? What's the food coloring? Oh, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yum. You get a robot vacuum yet? Kind of. Oh, you do? Well, R Roomba just released a robot vacuum slash mop. Because these things have kind of existed, the slash, the robot vacuum slash mop. But I didn't realize that you have to actually change 
you gotta like actually remove a part. You gotta remove a part. You gotta remove the mop part before you have it go onto your carpet. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with damp carpet. Uh oh. Now they got a new one available for a pre order now, shipping next week, and it will detect the type of flooring and then decide if it needs to mop or if it needs to vacuum. And it's one thousand ninety nine bucks. And you don't Whoa. need to. Ch- <laughs> and you don't need to change. A thing. Yeah. Whoa. That's a lot. There is uh, one from Robo Rock, which is the brand of vacuum I have. Mine was the cheap vacuum only model. That one is 950 bucks, And it can do a similar maneuver. But it only raises by a few millimeters. So you still might get some drippage. Whereas the Roomba Combo J7 Plus, Kate, lifts the mopping pad up completely. So there's no chance of a damp rug. So what'd you do? You bought some knockoff crap robot vacuum? You said kind of? No, we, when I say kind of, I think it is a Roomba, but it's a hand-me-down Roomba. And I have not investigated it to see if I need to like get an app or it's just plugged in in the corner of our dining room right now. So it's done nothing? It's done nothing. Just decoration. Yep. It's hidden away. Nobody can see it. It's fine. Okay. Are you ever going to try to set it up or no? Yeah, I am. I just, you know when you got to be in that place? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I've bought products months before and I bought them. I didn't receive them as gifts. Uh, and it takes me months, sometimes years before I'm like, uh, huh, that was kind of an impulse purchase, huh? I haven't opened that. Yeah. Like I move it to vacuum and then I look at it and I go, I should do something with that. You move your robot vacuum to vacuum the space where your robot is with a traditional uh-huh. vacuum? Uh huh. Wow, intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm also not very techy, so I really and truly keep hoping that Monty's going to be in that mood <laughs> to figure it out and then to teach me. Come on, Kate. It's good for your brain to learn that stuff. Learn new things. I learn other things, Matt. I learn other things. It's not that I just quit learning because I'm out of school and what have you, but <laughs> yeah. I also don't want to break it. Ah, you're not going to break it. You don't know. Do it for the show. Break it for the show. All right. Here's, uh, let me tell you how techy I am. Mm -hmm. So we have a bed with a remote because you can recline it and you can bring the feet up, right? Yeah. Sounds great. It is. It's fantastic. It's blinking at me because it needs the batteries to change. All right. So I changed the batteries. On the remote. On the remote. Okay. Okay. Doesn't work. Oh. Blinks at me. So I know that there's power, but nothing's happening. Monty unplugs the bed, leaves it unplugged for a while, doesn't work. So finally, after about two and a half weeks, Monty is tired of it and he wants to recline. So he like lifts the mattress off the frame. He's looking for a reset button. He's doing these. Finally, he gets on like YouTube or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you locked the remote. I'm like, no, I didn't lock the remote. I changed the batteries on the remote. And he's like, well, you inadvertently locked the remote. How does one know that? This is like just a button or something on the side of the remote? No. It got switched? Nope. Nope. There's no button. There's no like switch on the inside when you're changing the batteries. Oh, okay. It just happened. Possible. Basically, you're trying to get this remote to go, and so you hit a series of buttons in a certain order, which then led to it being locked? Something like that? No, it was from just changing the batteries. It just locked the remote. So the whole time, it probably didn't need its batteries changed, right? Is that what that indicates? Well, it's blinking because that's what happens when it needs to change the batteries. It blinks. But then you change the battery and it continued to blink, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So doesn't that indicate that the battery also blinks when it's locked? I don't know. Maybe Monty locked it. I'll take the full responsibility that I probably did it. Oh, come on. Blame your husband. Blame your husband. I know, but I'm not the type to, like, figure it out. I'm like, well, bed's broken. Guess we'll just have to live with it until Monty fixes it. Sleeping on the floor. There it is. The most important question is, can you recline each side individually or do you both have to agree in a reclining position because the whole mattress moves? The whole mattress moves. Oh, that's so sweet that you guys are able to yeah. settle on a rec- reclined position. Yeah. Aww. I mean, it's not to sleep. It's just like when we're watching movies and hanging out. Oh. Yeah. We, unless I've got a, when I did have a cold, I slept up a little bit. And he was miserable. Yeah, drain your face. Drain your face. Yep. Good way to do it. I've had to use just a recliner before for that, and that's not nearly as fun as a bed that 
fold you in half. Nope. Nope. Been there.